So I didn't want to set it in modern times. And then I thought, well, I wanted to remove them both in time and geography and season so that they were com sort of completely isolated, kind of in a, this kind of frozen bell jar, so that whatever was going to happen between them would have to happen uh, kind of face to face, mm -hmm. you know, mano a mano, as opposed to like, you know, if it were set now, he could just like Google her or, you know, <laughs> look her up on Facebook, you know, like I did Ralph Jewett, or, you know, I mean, there, there are just so many infinite ways that that we, we don't have private lives anymore. And I wanted this to be a private um, thing between these people involved. Um, so, and then, um, so I picked 1907 just because I wanted it to be late enough so that he would have electric lights and an automobile and indoor plumbing because I thought that idea of sending them outside to go to the bathroom all winter was like a little <laughs> too cruel. Um, <laughs> you sound very much, Ralph sounds very much like you in some of his, he does not like liars, clearly he doesn't. Ralph is very much like me, but I mean in a way they're all like me, mm -hmm. you know, I mean Antonio, <coughs> excuse me, Antonio is kind of Ralph when he was younger, right. you know, yeah. Ralph as a right. child, right. Um, and Catherine is very like me in uh, some very important ways. She says she can't believe she'll live without love or money. And also she believes in a kind of magical form of redemption from pain and sorrow. Um, and I do. I mean, that's me. So, But, uh, you know, people ask me all the time which one of the characters is me. And I guess it's, you know... In the very first chapter, it says about Ralph when he's standing on the platform and everybody's wandering around him, and he's so rich and so much the center of attention, you know, and um, it says about him, it says, he felt as though in all the world there were no place for him to sit down. Mm -hmm. And I have gone, I have li lived a life for 61 years feeling that there was no place for me to sit down. Um, and so Ralph is very much deeply me. And I wanted him to be happy. <laughs> it says he wanted a life where everybody could be saved and nobody went insane, but you but he can't have it. But he can have something else. I, I think you don't you don't I think for Ralph and Catherine and Antonio they think they want one thing, but in reality they actually want something else, but they don't know what it is. And they don't know what it is until it either descends on them like a gift from heaven, or they somehow find a way to open themselves up to a possibility that they hadn't imagined. <coughs> And I think, you know, it's, it's interesting, and in, in, to me, it's important in terms of this book to remember that all of the major characters, Ralph, Antonio, Catherine, were all abused as children in one way or another. So they're all people who are, who are living with trying to overcome that and to find their way back to some kind of innocence and wonder that they lost a long time ago when they were children, which or which they never really had, but they knew it was there, and you know, so they that's what that's what they need, that's what they really want. They just don't know how to say it. Same is true for writers. I think writers basically have like one thing they want to say, but they can't figure out what it is. <laughs> so they keep writing books in order to try to formulate what it is they want to say about the world or you know what it was in the crib that they were trying to say but they couldn't have the words and then so you write it and sometimes you think well that comes pretty close but that's not quite it and sometimes you think that's not it at all. So. Mm -hmm. 
So did you get it out in, in this book? Or? I don't think you ever get it out. No. Because I think what you really want to say is one sentence, like, I think you're great, or <laughs> please, hold, please Maybe. hold me, or it's time for my milk. I don't know what, I don't know what, the, I don't, it's one sentence, basically. You know, it's five words. Um, but you build a book that's 200, 291 pages, and somewhere in there is the thing, you know, save me, right. is what they say in this book. Save me, over and over and over. They say it, save me, save me, save me. No matter how destructive I am, no matter how self loathe how much self loathing I can throw up in front of you, please save me. And so I think that book says that. I'm not I'm not sure that that's ultimately the thing that I have to say, but I do know that it's a great concern. I mean, it's it's something that. I think about it. <laughs> That's, I mean, I don't know yet. This is all very new for me, and I, I don't know. Um, I do know that I started it, and at the beginning of last summer, I threw it at, I hit, I just looked at it, and it hit delete, you know, oh. just like, <laughs> into the void, and started over, and now I'm much happier with it. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I can do that. I don't know either. <laughs> did you start over with basically the same story, or did you start... Well, it's a true other? story. It's based, it's, it takes place in 1948. And it's based on a true story that I heard 30 years ago when I was living in Greece. Um, and a friend of mine, who at the time the story took place, was a little boy, was four or five years old. He was intimately involved story and um, so I know the story it's a true story I know the story backwards and forwards and I don't see any reason not to tell it but it's such to, to, I mean if you think about a story for 30 years um, one it must be pretty overwhelming and two you can get pretty tongue-tied you know and the other thing is, I've told the story a lot of times at like parties, dinner parties and things, and I said, this incredible thing happened to this friend of mine. And I wish now that I had never, ever told the story, because I think, you know, sometimes I think, why don't everybody who liked Reliable Wife come to my house for dinner, and I'll tell you <laughs> tell the, story the story the next <laughs> one, and you give me a dollar. And <laughs> <laughs> but you'll get dinner out of it. <laughs> Okay. Thank you all so much for having me, and thank you for waiting. I really do apologize that it really was an act of God. And um, I also want to thank Kelly, who was, as I said, the first person who ever had me read in this store when there were only six people here. Um, and she has a great bookstore and a great love of books, and I hope you will all make her rich and famous. <laughs>